Hi, welcome to the orchard. Everybody knows to get good fruit, you need good blossom. But how do you turn this blossom into good fruit? Stay tuned. Look at these beautiful blossoms. Let's talk about how we turn these into perfect fruits that you can harvest and enjoy. First of all, we're going to look at the right structure of tree that you need to protect your blossoms and grow really superb fruit. Then we're going to look at nutrition, what the key things are that you need to do to make sure your fruit sets. Then we'll talk about ecosystem management and providing the correct environment to support that tree growth. And finally, pollination partners. What do I need to plant next to my tree to make sure I get good cross pollination? Okay, so here is a tree which is now six years old. And for the first year, it's coming to blossom and I'm going to let it set fruit and grow the fruit on till harvest. You can see there's a lot of blossom on this tree, but for the first five years, I've removed blossom. The reason I remove the blossom is to encourage the roots to grow and these multiple stems to grow upwards, which I'll explain in a minute. So we're not only removing flowers for the first five years to ensure that the roots grow properly, but we're also encouraging multiple branches to grow up and form this unique narrow canopy system which is so important in the way that we grow our fruit here. And that has a number of benefits. One of them is the fact that it dwarfs the tree and it brings the blossom closer to the ground and makes it a lot easier to harvest. But secondly, it protects the tree from hail and wind and we get a much better fruit set because we've got these multiple branches. Of course, going forwards, we will remove some of this extra growth in time. Some of these whippy shoots, and some, maybe one or two of these taller shoots here will eventually go. But the important thing to remember is all of this pruning is done in the summer in July and August because that promotes fruit growth for the future. So let's talk about nutrition. The key point is that these trees are getting virtually all their nutrition that they need through the microbiome that we have in the soil of the orchard. And let's talk about exactly what those nutrients are and why they're so important. So how is it that we're able to produce such healthy trees with such a lot of blossom that produce such high quality fruits and have such high yields? Well, if you look at the soil and the environment around the trees, if you look at the vegetation that grows all around these trees, you're getting a sense of what's actually happening below ground. We've got plants like nettles, which are an indicator of high nitrogen, but are also one of the most important regenerative plants because they're so good at solubilizing silica and bringing up nutrients that plants love. We've also got creeping thistle, which is an incredibly good solubilizer of phosphorus at depth and is able to bring up a lot of calcium. And we've also got the manure from the sheep, which of course add humates, which feed the protozoa, the bacteria and the fungi, which are so important in nutrient cycling, and sheep sorrel, which also brings up calcium. All of this covering of the soil prevents oxidation. The nutrients in these soils are provided through very healthy bacteria, fungi, and exudates from protozoa and nematodes. And of course our earthworm population has really increased over the last few years with these trees. So we're gonna talk about what these nutrients really do. So we know that trees have a huge requirement for nutrition and trying to find out exactly what the right nutrients are for a tree uh, at the right time is the job of all growers. All growers are trying to maximize the yield by giving the, the correct feeds. But what we do here is rather than supplying nutrients on the ground um, and hoping that they go into the tree, we actually rely on the dialogue between the tree and the microbiome in the soil. The bacteria and the fungi pick up chemicals that are secreted by the roots of the tree. The tree is requesting the nutrients it needs. The bacteria and fungi are able to then mine out and sequester those nutrients and give them to the tree at the right dosage in exchange for some sugar. And as a result of that, we have a very healthy, balanced nutritional program. So we are not directly feeding the tree in the conventional way. What we use here are rock dusts, which are made from basalt, organically certified rock dusts, and they're really feeding the microbiome. They're not directly feeding the tree at all. They're broken down by the bacteria and the fungi very slowly, and they have a huge number of trace elements. 
dozens and dozens of trace elements, vital of course for the health of the fruit, and they're passed in exchange to the trees and supplied into the fruit, which of course raises the polyphenol content of the fruit uh, to a very high level and explains why our trees are so healthy. But the other thing we do is we use a seaweed foliar feed on the leaves uh, four times a year, and that's really just a biostimulant, very, very low dose rates. Um, so the nutritional requirements of the trees are not really met by any of the inputs that we give. The majority of it is made by the soil uh, or taken from the soil bedrock. The third thing I want to talk about is the orchard ecosystem. And you may be able to hear birds around. We have an enormous number of birds in this environment, and they're just part of an incredibly diverse habitat management system that we operate. We have things like this wild crab apple growing in the hedgerow which provides pollination and pollen to the apples so it's a very beneficial plant to have. We have hawthorn which is just coming into blossom which again supports hoverflies which are predators and lots and lots of pollinators and we also have plants like the cow parsley and the white dead nettle. All of them provide opportunities for both pollinators and predators. And what we're doing here is managing the ecosystem to maximize the diversity, which makes it much more likely that the predators and the pollinators will outweigh any pests that we have. And the plant's immune systems are able to keep the plants very, very healthy because of the way we manage the ecosystem here. We have a really strong supportive ecosystem. Fourth and final thing I want to talk about is pollination partners. It's very important to mix up and have a very diverse collection of fruits because one cultivar will probably not be able to pollinate itself. So Kingston Black is flowering now at the same time as Jersey Black and Rosemary Russet. And all of them are in the same pollination group and they can cross pollinate. So your strategy should always be plant lots of different cultivars but make sure that they're able to pollinate each other at the same time. That will make a huge difference to your yield. There you have it. Those are the four ways that we use to produce healthy, excellent fruits on young trees, just like this beautiful cat's head apple, which is flowering for the first year. It's a very ancient variety, and you can see it's really doing well.